My next guest does not need an introduction. If you've been following me for any amount of time, you already know who she is. We're just going to go right into it. The strawweight slayer herself, Mariah Castro. Mariah, it's always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Long time no see. Uh, I guess I'm Adam Weight Slayer now, though. Um, <laughs> so as much as I would uh, love to hang around 115, um, I will be dropping this time. But I'm I'm good. How are you doing? I am. Uh, I'm I'm doing amazing. I'm feeling good. It's it's May. It's my favorite month because this is the month of my birthday. Maybe I'll do a crazy ass call out later on. I don't know. It's been a while. The call out king hasn't been around for a while. I might have to dust that shit off. Yeah, you might have gotten too nice now. Now, now it's time to bring it back. Now, now you gotta call some people out. I think. I think so. Well, speaking of call outs, let's call out a few of your homies. Flex fighting series that happened not that long ago, and on day one of the uh, tournament, or I should say, for the day card, you had several homies that were on this one. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about uh, some of your teammates that competed on that card and uh, what happened? Um, So they were both debuting um, amateur MMA. Uh, I had my teammate, Michael, he wound up making 135. So uh, he debuts and he actually gets a rear naked choke um, in the second round. Um, And that was pretty impressive to me. He's like, I know he has good jujitsu, but he took a few shots to get the takedown. It's not like he took the kid down easy or, you know, you can just pull guard and, and get where you need to be. But um, he threw, you know, he bit down on his mouthpiece. So I, I like to see that, too. Um, and then my teammate Vicky actually had a catch weight at 130. Um, she lost a decision to to a tough girl. Um, the girl's name's Ital. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar. You might be familiar with I, her. I know the name. I, and yeah. I, I, I know the name. So I, I, I have some familiarity with what, who you're talking about. Yes. But uh, she's actually got a quick turnaround. She's going to fight on uh, May 12th. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, she, you know, when when you don't when you don't get her, you want a quick turnaround. You're ready. Uh, that was her debut. And she just found out what the hype was and was like, oh, I have to do this again immediately, um, which I love to see. Uh, I love to see that when they get initiated, it's almost like a call. The, yeah, the absolutely. Thing, you know, were you in the corner for any of your teammates or um, were you just kind of there just hanging out or? No, no, I wasn't in the corner. I, um, I just, uh, I got a pretty good seat and I just wanted to support them. You know, it's, it's good to go. I actually like going to the amateur events because the way they fight, um, it's just, they, they're so willing to take risks, you know, in the professional events, fighters have to be more careful. We have a little bit more to worry about. We have more time on the clock to pace ourselves. Uh, these guys just like go for broke and that is so fun. <laughs> It really is. And like one of the other things about amateur MMA is, um, you know, fair or unfair. um, And maybe it's just, you know, my half-baked opinion, but it's like it almost favors grappling and wrestling because if you can get a takedown, I mean, you're fucked. Like if you're on if you're the one that got taken down, like you could spend half the round trying to get back up and you got 90 seconds left. And it's like if that's yeah. not your department, if you're not a grappler or uh, a jujitsu person or whatever, or that's even a stupid thing to say, because if you, even if you are a jujitsu person, that could take you most of the round to even try to set that up. So it doesn't favor being on the ground at all. But at the same time, um, you can take more risks by trying to get up because right. you know, there are less threats with you trying to get up or uh, even a, something as simple as... Um, staying low and and resting in the guard there's no elbows so you can you can get away with that by hugging and punching the body and doing things like that so you know there's a difference if you lay down in someone's guard like that they might start trip chipping you with elbows uh and things like that and you know get, you might get head kicked on the way up there's like several threats or need um so that's why you know, people should take more risks in amateur MMA, MMA grappling, because there's no, when, when you have the shin guards, there's no uh, punching to the face on the ground. Um, so with limited threats, you should feel more comfortable trying to get up, you know? Absolutely. Well, I want to shift gears. I want, I want to talk about you specifically, two things about you that I want to talk about is, um, your preparations, your training. I know that you train with, uh, Natalie Schlesinger, your, your frenemy there. And I (laughs) wanted to ask you a little bit about that. It's, it's kind of a cool story for people who don't know. 
uh, way back yonder, you you fought each other. Uh, it was a it was a, a, actually a few years ago now, and now you guys are like training partners. What has that experience been like to go from like competing against her in an actual bout to now, you know, you see each other all the time and you're getting working together. What's that experience been like? It's definitely uh, an interesting narrative. Like we met uh, before, well before we fought, actually, um, and. We kind of wanted to train together, but we knew that at some point we would be fighting because the the pool is very shallow. Um, so we kind of waited. We were like, all right, we're definitely going to end up fighting. So we had the fight. And then, uh, you know, we talked about training, you know, thereafter. We were always cool. You know, it's just that's the game. That's business. You fight and then, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, now, you know, we're training together three, four times a week sometimes. Um you know, but we're perfect work for each other. Um, and that's that's kind of what it is, not even just because we we fight in the same weight class, but stylistically, I think we both bring a lot to each other's, uh, you know, camps when we help each other out with with our with our camps. So um, that's been and honestly, uh, you know, she's a she's a really solid grappler wrestler. Um, and that's something that I've been trying to work on, you know, tremendously um for the past year or more uh specifically yeah and and, and yeah you're exactly right like that's exactly what i think about when i think about natalie i think about wrestling i think about gra grappling and for you i think about striking and give her look she gives you looks and that that just probably uh has done wonders for not only your game but also hers mm -hmm. as well so uh shout out to the both of you um i know recently uh, you went to Asia and you did some training abroad. You were part of a uh, a one fighters uh, camp. Can you talk about that experience? Because that was a really big deal, and that, we'd be remiss to not talk about that. That must have been a hell of an uh, of an experience. Uh, it definitely was. While it is like a really really rough flight, like going there was nineteen hours direct, and that took a mental toll. Um, so that wasn't fun, but the experience was amazing. Like the culture over there. It's actually pretty diverse. Um, it's not what I expected. Their official language is English over there, um, mm -hmm. which I did not know. Uh, and they have different cultures like Indian, Chinese. Um, there's a Turkish presence there, uh, Malaysian, you know, so super diverse. Uh, food was amazing. That was honestly my my favorite part because I I see all the same products that we have, right? And And I'm seeing how like, there's so much less sugar. It's not processed. It's the produce is fresh. Like, you know, a person gets addicted to stuff like that. I got so enamored, honestly. I, I spent, what, eight days there maybe. And I just was like, you know, immersed. I had a favorite coffee shop already, you know, <laughs> like I was, I I loved it. It's, it's actually, uh, they had a shopping mall across the street from the hotel. So I spent a lot of time there. Um, and, and the people are very polite there. That's what surprises, you know, a person from New Jersey that I'm surprised by that. <laughs> well, you know what, for the record, you are very polite, despite what you might, uh, <laughs> despite outward appearances, you're actually very nice and very polite. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, you know, don't worry, I won't but tell like, you. You know, we don't greet each other. Like people yeah. there greet each other. Like you'll get in an elevator and people will be like, oh, hi, how are you? In passing, you know, wherever small talk, things like that. And you're just like kind of taken back because you're like, oh, wow, like this is not a Jersey thing. So it was it was kind of refreshing. It was nice. I completely get where you're saying, uh, you know, just being in the D.C. area, it's this, a lot of the same vibe. People approach you. It's like, what are you trying to sell me? <laughs> you know, like, no. What do you I want? Yeah, I don't know where the metro is. No, I'm not buying anything. Get away from <laughs> me. Yeah, I, to I totally get it. Um so you you go in there, you're part of that camp. And when you're like working in a capacity to like get a high level fighter, like ready, like that's your job. That's what it is that you're supposed to do. Like, are there some do's and don'ts to like how that whole arrangement kind of works? I, I'd love to get your take on that because I feel especially for females out there in your weight class, at some point, someone else is going to run into an opportunity that's very similar to one that you just had. And, you know, sharing is caring. So what are the do's and don'ts of, uh, you know, being brought in under an arrangement like that? Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you you do the whole camp with the person, you build a relationship with the person, you know, you're sparring, you're, you're, you're doing all these rounds together, you're helping each other get better. It's not just, 
you know, I benefit from the experience as well. Like the entire training camp has elevated me, um, training with another high level athlete. Uh, so when they bring you out there, of course, there are going to be do's and don'ts. Um, you are at work, so you're on standby. If you need to be there, you know, two times a day training, um, you know, going over the game plan, whatever it is, you know, I was out there, I was training as well. I had to, you know, break a sweat as well. So uh, in between her training sessions, I was also doing my own. Um, and of course you're there to be kind of supportive. So the coaches are the bad guys. You're the good cop, right? You're kind of there to be like the, the supportive friend while they're cutting weight. So she's cutting weight on the treadmill. I'm running on the treadmill. Whenever she was doing something, I was doing something with whatever it was with her because that just makes it even though it sucks it, it makes it a little bit more manageable right you don't want people just standing around watching you suffer um so i just tried to be as supportive as possible and i feel like that's what i was hired to do um you know help her with the weight because uh as a female we we kind of understand how women's bodies work what she's supposed to be eating when she's supposed to stop things like that so, you know, um, definitely don't make the situation about you. It, it's not about you at all. So if I have advice for anybody that's going to be in that situation, you're at work, you're at, you're on standby and don't make it about you. <laughs> Perfect. So we get back from Singapore. At what point does Kambate ring your phone up uh, and, and say that they want you to fight? Um, I actually already was booked for April 29th when I went to um, Singapore. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was. I That's why I was training out there. Uh, we actually got a chance to go to Evolve MMA in uh, Singapore, which is a beautiful facility. Oh, sweet. Su several floors. It's, it's a beautiful glass building um, owned by, I, I think it's the guy Shatri that um, mm -hmm. runs the one. one. Guy? Yep. Yes, yes. It, it was, I was so glad that they were able to have us there, but um, amazing facility. So we... You know, that's why I had to get my work in as well, keep my weight low. Um, so it was definitely a business trip. Uh, but then Combate kind of pushed the fight back. We got news, you know, when I got back, that's, you know, they wanted to push it back and then got pushed back again. Um, so now we're locked in for May 28th. We're at May 28th. Um, as we already discussed previously, 115 pounds, like, you are synonymous with that weight to me. Uh, we're going down to 105 pounds. That's a pretty big deal because, you know, when I see what you look like at 115 pounds, even, um, I know that's a little bit of a cut for you. I know that's not a huge difference between what you typically walk around at, but when I see you at 115 pounds, I'm just like, okay, well, there's really not a whole heck of a lot more to kind of like go to get rid of here. Like yeah. you're, you're, you're pretty low as is um, you're taking a fight at Adam weight, which to me is like, okay, well you wouldn't take the fight if you knew you weren't going to make the weight anyway, you have a plan. I guess the question more summary isn't so much about making the weight. it's how do you approach your training differently, knowing that you have a bigger cut ahead of you. Are there things that you have to do differently with that weight cut in mind? You know, the idea is just that I would get on the plane at a certain weight, right? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to get under 110. Uh, if I get on the plane at 110, that's fine too. And cut the last few pounds the week over, that's fine as well. Um, so I think setting small goals with my weight is really how I get it done. So I have about, what do I have, about three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that I'm on track with that. Um, if I just set one small goal, like, okay, I'll get on the plane at 110 or better. Um, and definitely, you know, the dieting thing, um, you have to diet a little extra, right? There are some things that you get away with when you're only cutting, you know, 10 and 12 pounds that if you're cutting more than that, you know, 18, 20 pounds that you, you can't do. Um, but I think I'm, I'm starting to understand like the more times that I cut, I think I'm starting to understand my body better. Uh, and, and I learned that carbs are not the enemy, you know, that everybody convinces you that they are. And then you start learning like, well, actually I lose more weight when I have carbs because I'm, I'm burning, you know, more calories and things like that. So you just start to get educated a little bit more each time you do it. Like I said, I made 109 for the, you know, the last fight, 
Um, I do feel like if I was lighter, you know, at that point that it would have been easier. So I think I'm getting lighter now and then it'll be easy to cut the last few. Was there a reason um, that you were motivated to go to the Adam weight class? I mean, typically if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, it was there, was there a, a motivating reason for that? Is there uh, maybe a thought process that this could be a permanent weight class for you? Or is this just kind of like a one-time deal? Well, I always knew it was a possibility. I mean, I am small, right? I do feel like I'm an in-betweener. Um, I would love if 110 was a division, you know, that would be, that would be ideal for me. Uh, but because it's not, I kind of have to choose to, to drop the weight. You know, they have a, a, a pretty deep atom weight division. So that's interesting to me. Not too many organizations do. Um, I like that they put on a lot of events as opposed to like Invicta, <clears throat> excuse me, who don't put on as many events. And so like, that's kind of what enticed me. Um, they definitely have uh, some good matchups for me at 105. And just size wise, I think that it makes the most sense. And I knew it was a possibility, you know, um, but that's not to say that if I get the call up to the UFC, right, when I'm when I'm done with this contract, that I won't go up to 115. We've we've discussed that as well. I'd love to talk about this uh, gal that you'll <laughs> be fighting here on May 28th. Tell me, who is it that you're fighting and what do you know about her? Running this podcast is a ton of work. That's why I like to unwind. I like to have a couple beers. I like to have a glass of wine or two every once in a while. It doesn't take much of it to make me feel like trash the next day. Headaches, upset stomach. We've all been there. It's the worst. Your weekend is completely ruined. That is why my go-to is pregame. It is a revolutionary elixir from my friends at Vitaly Boost. One scoop with a glass of water before you indulge and another before you go to bed is the only investment you need to make to be on track for a productive next day. It's not just for drinkers. Fighters love it too. After hitting the scales, I know what you do. You go and you grab a sports drink or you grab something else to get you the electrolytes that you need. I personally know some fighters who use this as their go-to coming off the scales because they want the electrolytes without the sugar, the artificial flavors, or any of the other garbage that you'll find in other products. Go to vitaliboost.com and use my code BASEMENT at checkout to let them know that I sent you. You'll get a discount for your trouble. You've got nothing to lose. It's a 60-day money-back guarantee, and we ship this stuff worldwide. Check it out. The link for this is in the description. I know you're going to love it. I actually, what's funny is um, I somehow ended up, I followed her a long time ago. Her name's Janet Garcia. And something like just told me like, oh, we're going to end up fighting. And um, so I followed her and I, you know, I would see her on my page here and there. And then the opportunity came up. Um, I actually had two options and I chose her. I felt stylistically it would be a fun fight. I do know she has no MMA experience. She has only Muay Thai experience. Um, so this will be a debut for her. She doesn't even have amateur fights as far as I know, like amateur MMA fights as far as I know. Um, but I do know she is a purple belt in jiu-jitsu, so she grapples. Um, and I just think it, it would be a good challenge. I didn't, I didn't choose her because I felt like, oh, she has no MMA fights. This is going to be easy. I like that she's a competent striker. Um, that, that entices me. So, yeah, I just I want to be challenged and I want to prove things as usual. You know, I I, ha I always have that little chip on my shoulder. You No. <laughs> yeah, I do. I want to I just want to show evolution and prove things. And I'm like, you know, and then I hope the commentators say nice, nice things this time around. Sometimes they get a little biased. So well, in my covid haze, I don't really recall exactly what <laughs> yeah. they were saying, but uh yeah, COVID and all. I think this is the very first time I'm saying this on record. I watched that last fight. I had cold sweats. It's one in the morning. I, oh, my God. Shouts and, out to you. Man. For staying up for that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, as soon as the fight was over, I, I just, I, I remember I DM'd you and I was like, congratulations, Mariah. I have COVID and I'm going to sleep. And then I, thought, yes. then I yeah. think I slept for like a day. And, and then I hit you up again and I was just wondering how you were doing and stuff like that. But in any event, there are a lot of good things about your last fight. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about it. But in terms of like evolution, you talked about progress. Like 
There are certain things I want to see uh, from myself. They're like, I want my game to evolve. I want to be leveling up. And what are some of those things? Um, you know, I, I'm not going to ask you about your game plan. I don't even want to ask you where you think you'll have your advantage over her. Let's find out on May 28th. But just for you personally, because it's you versus you at the end of the day, what are some of the things that you want to see out of yourself that no matter what the result is, you can look back on uh, this fight here in a couple months and be like, yep, like as far as like an evolution, as far as a progress, like I did hit the things that I want to see out of myself. What are some of those I'm trying to put it all together. I want it all to be put together well. Um, mixing things up, you know, so that no matter where the the fight goes, I have a response for anything. I think that's the most important thing. Uh, it's not so much, oh, I have this one game plan. It's that I'll be able to, you know, hopefully dominate wherever it goes. Um, so that's, that's what's kind of important to me is to kind of display uh, the well-roundedness. Um, I don't want to be, you know me, I don't want to be confined and put in, you know, a box as a striker or whatever, despite the fact that I have more fun doing it. Um, it's more about an intelligence thing for me. I want to fight smart. That's, you, just, that's longevity, right? You fight smart and then you can do it for years. I thought you fought very smart in your last fight. Um, I thought you showed your well-roundedness. Um, you You showed your striking prowess. And then you also gave her different looks to keep her to keep her guessing. And I expect to see more of the same from you here in a couple of weeks. Before I let you go, I have to ask one MMA question. I have to ask an MMA question. It wouldn't be a show without you if I didn't do this. So Cyborg just resigned with Bellator. Your thoughts on that? I am completely like, I was not expecting this at all. She's deciding to re-up with Bellator. Your thoughts. Do you love the move? Do you not like the move? And uh, if you're Kayla Harrison, how pissed off are you right now? She absolutely should have went to PFL because who the hell is she going to fight in Bellator? They're going to bring in cans. They're going to bring in these. Like, honestly, it's just it's not going to be. I I guess they're paying her really well. Mm. Bellator, I'm sure. Um, maybe she doesn't like the the fact that she has to fight for a million dollars, like fight tournament style. Maybe that is off putting to her. Um, but yeah, the only thing that makes sense in, in both of their careers, honestly, is to fight each other. That's just it. Like everybody's kind of over them. Like I'm, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know about anybody else, honestly, but I am, I'm over them. Right. Like who else are they going to fight? Like they beat the shit out of everybody except for Kayla recently losing to Pacheco. Sure. But honestly, I think that she would win the rematch. I'm not going to lie. I think that she got complacent. Uh, I, yeah, it's hard. Well, yeah, it's hard to argue with that. Yeah, I, I, I think that as well. And Pacheco is like that chick is a beast. Like if you're is. not, if you're not on your best, exactly. Uh, That's what, what I think it was. Up. Yeah. Yep. Like, Good night know. for for Larissa, and then it was just like an off night for Kayla. Yeah, it, it it absolutely was. For me, Mariah, I look at it this way, and it's like knowing cyborg and me and cyborg are like roughly the same age. And I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, she might be older. She might be actually that's possible. Uh, Yeah. I'm not sure, but we'll just ballpark it. I'm about the same age as her. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, like at this age, like you figure Anthony Pettis is right in our same age range too. The idea of potentially like going to PFL and fighting in a seasonal format. I don't know how realistic that is. I no. really don't. Not at this stage. And so I'm wondering if that had anything to do with it. Like, I wonder with Cyborg, it's like, okay, I get the mega fight with Kayla that you would do at, like at the end of the year. I could get how that would be appealing. But I wonder if there was a hiccup in negotiations as far as like what would be next. And I wonder if like she's thinking she's going to fight in the tournament or maybe PFL's like, yo, we really don't want you in this tournament. Like I'm wondering just kind of that dynamic, because I think from a branding standpoint, you enter her in your tournament right now and it sounds good and it may even look good for the first couple of fights, but you know, it's four fights minimum. And it's like that third or fourth fight over the course of, you know, six months, what is that going to look like? Uh, I mean, you might not like what you see. That sounds harsh, but I'm just being, that's just. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's going to be undersized as well, but I I think it would be, 
like as far as entertainment goes, like I think even her and Pacheco would have a have a good fight as well. Like yes. it would be an entertaining fight as well. So I just feel like the more uh, practical approach would have been going to BFL, you know, close out your career there kind of thing. Closing out your career in Bellator, like, I don't know. I just don't know. And then against two, you know, you got to think about that. Like, even even Bud left. Julia Bud even left. Everybody, you got to kind of move move on. Like, I don't know. I, like think, for, I think for females uh, in particular, I think PFL is like the place to, to be for female MMA. Um, like for the bigger girls anyway. Like if you're like a straw weight or a fly weight, that's fine. But like, if you're in those bigger weight classes, like PFL is where you want to be. Cause you know, they have uh, a lot of talent and like, they're lo- like all of those girls that are in that featherweight class in particular, I look at them, they're all good. Every one of them were good. And I'm just like, and th- they're really great fights. And to me, I'm just kind of like, you know, here you have the UFC that has basically killed that division. They don't even really want to mess with it but you look at this pool of women that they're bringing in. A lot of these girls are in their prime or their um, young prospects that they're bringing over from Europe and all of them can scrap. And it's like, man, I feel like UFC, I felt like it's like a missed opportunity of sorts. Cause I don't believe that there are unexciting featherweights out there. I think quite the opposite. And the PFL's featherweight division is a great example. Well, I mean, the UFC barely has a, a women's featherweight division. Um, that's kind of, you know, it's been downhill for a while, for a while now. Um, I don't and, even know if they have rankings on, uh, no, they, they don't even have enough fighters to have rankings. Yeah. That was the case. You know, I, I really would hate to see who's in, who's, who's in there, but, um, yeah, so I, they're probably going to move away from that. I don't see that lasting too long because pretty much PFL and Bellator have all of the, the female featherweights. Yeah. Um, I would love it if PFL made lighter divisions for women, that would that would be cool. I would know? like for, to see PFL add a men's flyweight and then female uh, strawweight yeah, for sure. Like uh, I, I I would be all for it. And uh, you know what? Maybe it's a possibility. But that begets my second question, Mariah. And it's the advent of the PFL. Like in the amount of time that I've known you, excluding one because one is kind of its own thing. So let's take let's remove them from the equation. It's solidly. From when I first met you, I would say it was UFC, Bellator, and then PFL. Now I would say PFL and Bellator have switched. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Bellator is like on the decline. Um, there's just too much of a disparity between the, the people that they have. It's like, it's almost like they'll sign anybody. They have some of the best athletes in the world, right, at the top of the divisions, and like lightweight division especially. Um and then it's like people that you find at a truck stop. And I just think like when you don't have an exclusivity, like a sense of exclusivity, your stock goes down. That's just automatic. That's just how it goes. But um, definitely uh, production wise, even, you know, they're losing out even one. Like that's one thing that I would say, like one has a phenomenal production uh, when you go there, the, the sound, the lights, uh, the way things are done. Um, when you get to see it behind the scenes. Um, so I think even Bellator loses out production wise, um, maybe getting outdated. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, one of the biggest, one of the reasons why I love Bellator so much is because a lot of people I know fight for Bellator. So it's like, it's in it, like the Bellator undercard is where it's at. And then after the undercard, it's like, it's crazy because I start to lose interest most of the time. It's like, okay, did everyone I know, did they get their opportunity? Did they fight? Did I watch them all stream for free on YouTube? Oh, then I'm cool now. Because it's like, mm-hmm. and their content's behind a paywall on Showtime. It's like, I don't really feel like I need to like get a Showtime subscription to watch this. No. And, and for me, it's fine because I'm an MMA podcast and half the people I talk to are going to be on that undercard anyway. But if you're trying to market to like the people that matter, which are just fans out there in general, that's not a good indicator to hear people like me talk about how your undercard is more exciting than your main card. Like that's terrible. That's like a terrible business model. And you need to turn that around in my opinion. I just don't know if they can. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I don't know if they can either. Honestly, the competition is too stiff right now. Mm -hmm. Um, it, It really is. 
So I, mean, I think that they'll be compel you to like sign a long, a multi-year uh, fight agreement with Bellator unless they're paying you something silly because uh, yeah, you know, a three fight deal with Bellator and then it's like versus something comparable in PFL. And it's like, yo, and if we like you, we'll put you in this season next year. Like that's way more compelling. Cause it's like, wait a minute. It's, it's, a fight promotion based on merit top meritocracy and you don't know who I am. Like if I believe in myself, I'm going to take that every time, oh, yeah. um, you know, that's way less pol- fight politics. I'm going to have to potentially deal with. Why wouldn't I? So fight politics is a big reason why that's why that setup is cool. You don't have to worry about that. It's literally laid out. Um, and then they pay well too. So why not? Like they're, they're just getting in a sense, they haven't hit their prime. Yeah. So why not? Um, Obviously, everybody's dream is is to kind of get just to say you got in the best fight organization in the world. Right. That's pretty much it. But we might not always make the money that we deserve, you know, at that point. So if you're making a choice between PFL and Bellator, um, I think in the long run, PFL, for several reasons, would would, would be the better option. Um, Yeah. And for you guys, uh, they fight in the garden. That's basically in your backyard. Maybe Nart Goka versus Jake Paul. What do we think about that at the end of the year? Possibility? Possibility? Hey, Jake, uh, Jake Paul wouldn't be ready. Nah, Jake Paul, by the end of the year, Jake Paul wouldn't be ready. No, no, no. Definitely Let's not. see it. Let's see. He needs, it. he needs more time for sure. Oh, call. Give Nart a call. Give him a call. Let's see what happens. I'll 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 put my money on. I know who I put my he money on. He would call him out. He would he would absolutely call him out. I should urge him to. I really should. I, you know what? Well, you know what? I'm gonna DM Nart is sm- immediately after we're done with this and be like, "Hey, yo, man, I'm just saying, like, you, some they're gonna have to bring in somebody from Jake Paul, and it's gonna have to be somebody making a de- debut, and they would pick some guy like you because, you know, if they're trying to like fill out an arena, like they're gonna want to fill that out with like people from New Jersey, New York. Why yep. not you? Like, yep. I know it sounds crazy, but is it really all that crazy? I don't think so. No, no, not at all. You know, somebody's got to fight him. Might as well be Nart. Fuck, fuck, man. They, they, they can do it at 185. Exactly. And Nart is, Jesus Christ, he's huge. So I talked to Ian Alston not that long ago. Nart went into Marquez um, uh, when he was supposed to fight. Um, this is before his fight got called off. And he went to train uh, at Marquez MMA. And yep. uh, Ian Alston's there. And Ian texts me uh, later on that day. He's like, yo, um, are you? Like Nart Goka, you know that dude? And I'm like, yeah, I know Nart. I'm like, why? What's up? And he's like, dude, that guy is fucking huge. I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> he's like, I am amazed that guy can uh fight in the weight class that he does. Like, that guy is fucking massive. And I'm like, dude, Nart's a problem. A lot of people don't know about him. He's like, well, consider myself. I consider myself informed. He's really good. And I'm like, yeah, yeah dude, Nart's the truth. I was and really he's still young. So we're, you know, he's still young. So. Um, he's definitely still going to grow even more into it, right? He hasn't done all his his growing. I hope he uh, gets an opportunity. I hope he's uh, I hope he's in good spirits, and I hope we see him compete very very soon. I know he was supposed to fight Galante. Uh, that's an unfortunate uh, turn of events. But Nart, if you're listening to this, I hope you're doing well. Mariah, I want to give you the last word. Uh, anyone you want to thank or anyone you want to shout out before we uh, wrap it up? Of course, I'll sh- you know team shout out, training partner shout out. Um, of course I got to shout out Natty Ice for, you know, she had our feature, made a feature. Um, and then, you know, just, uh, thank you to Duran TPT as always. Thank you to you as always. Um, been a long time since we checked in, um, but I'm glad we did it. And hopefully we can get another one in after the fight. Um, that would be cool. Absolutely. Up- That's what I'm here for. Whatnot. Let's do it. Bam. We're making things happening. Mariah, always a pleasure. Good luck on your fight. I will be watching. Best of luck.